Hi, this is Phyllis with MFW, and welcome to another of my tutorials on fundamental issues in feng shui. Today is going to be part one of a three-part series um, discussing the Bagua, which is the eight-sided map that feng shui practitioners use. What I want to start with is a picture of the eight-sided map I'm referencing here, and this is called the Bagua. Okay, it is an octagon-shaped map and it's divided into eight areas that correspond to eight different areas of your life. We'll go over those in just a moment. Okay? And then you see in the middle of the Bagua is the yin-yang symbol. And that really represents that when you've adjusted a space so that all eight areas have been adjusted, then there is peace and harmony and balance within that space, which is in the center representing health. What's important to see is that See, these eight areas, okay, when we lay down a map, you have to have a point of reference in order to get the map correct. So most maps have a north, east, west, west, south point of reference. This Bagua's point of reference is the architectural entryway or um, into a space. So when I say architectural entryway or door into a space, I mean the door that was intended to be the entryway. So many times people tell me, well, I don't use the front door of my home. That's fine. It still was meant to be the front door. So we're going to put the Bagua down in reference using the reference space of, your, of the intended architectural entryway of the space. So the entryway of the space will always correspond to the lower three areas of the Bagua. And they will be helpful people career or spirituality. Okay, so this will always either be the front door and then we use the Bagua and we will see that the upper right hand corner will always be wealth. The upper, excuse me, the upper left hand corner will always be wealth. The upper right hand corner will always be relationships. Okay, again if the door comes in in the, in the middle section then, of course, then the door, we would say the door enters in through career. If the door is over here in the lower left-hand corner, then the door would enter through spirituality. And then we can really gauge, using this map, what area of your space, your office, your home, your property corresponds with what. Now, it's a little bit easier to see on this, okay? So let me see if I can just angle this better for you. Okay, so that you can see again, down at the lower third, wisdom, which is in blue, career, which is black, um, helpful people, which is gray, Your the door will always be aligned with that. Okay, so you can have a center door, a door that's aligned to the left, a door that's aligned to the right. And again, entering a space, the upper left-hand corner will always be wi wi wealth or abundance, and the upper right-hand corner will always be relationships. And then we'll be able to then divide the space into the nine areas and know where we need to adjust what. Okay. Now I know it's a little difficult to see me just, you know, from me just holding up these um, these two diagrams. Okay, so please don't hesitate to go to my Facebook, which uh, fan page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Phyllis Quinlan Coaching. Um, there is a, a nice clear picture of the Bagua there with a simple explanation that you can reference. Okay, so again, the Bagua is the eight sided map that's used by Western School Feng Shui practitioners. Um, to get a sense of what space, what areas of a particular space correspond to which areas of your life. So, again, if we're going to start in the upper right hand, upper left hand corner of any space, that's always going to be wealth or abundance. Moving clockwise, then the 12 o'clock area would be fame or reputation. The upper right hand space will always be relationship. Let me use this maybe to help. Okay relationship. Then we're coming down to children and future, helpful people, career, knowledge and spirituality, family. Okay? When all of these areas are then adjusted and balanced, you create health and harmony, which is that 
sec that middle section, represented by that middle section. So, let's start with three areas. Okay, and again, this is the first of three installments. So we're going to talk about what most people really want to talk about the most, which is the wealth and abundance graph. So if we, again, enter the space, the upper left-hand area will always correspond to wealth and abundance. Now, although this is the area that we would adjust to bring in more money, remember, everybody's definition of prosperity and abundance is different. So if you're looking for an abundance of health, an abundance of joy, an abundance of peace on earth, Whatever this is, this is the area that we would adjust. It resonates to the color purple. Okay, it doesn't mean that you have to paint this section purple, but having some purple items um, does help draw the energy in. Keeping in mind again that feng shui is the ancient honoring of quantum physics. That's what we're doing here. Okay. Um, the element or nature's force that oversees this area is wind. And in Chinese, we are talking about what is known as the gentle wind of, of the gentle auspicious wind, or the wind of prosperity coming in. Okay? So, again, if you're looking for more money or you're looking to enhance whatever your definition of abundance and prosperity is, this is the place to start. It's also a good place to work with if you're having some issues with. Um, asking for your fair share, so to speak, of things. If you're having issues with working with the law of adjust, uh, law of attraction, then this is a good place to adjust because one of the key things to the law of attraction is to understand that the universe is infinite and that you don't have to ask for your fair share. You can ask for as much as you want. It's not only there for you and there for everyone else. It's not like you're being greedy. Okay? It's there for you. It's yours to have. You need to ask for it and hold the intention for it in order to attract it to you. Okay, And you need to keep in mind that it's your birthright. So this is a great place to enhance if you're having issues with that because of perhaps Western philosophical overtones in your upbringing. Okay? Again, it's your birthright to be abundantly happy or abund have abundance in your life. Some of the uh, things that you want to do to anchor that intention, again, of course, is number one, you're going to address the clutter and clean that space up. Um, you can bring in purple items. Um, if you're using uh, symbols, other symbols, coins are pretty obvious. Chinese coins are especially popular, although you can have a little bowl with coins and, and different things from around the world. Um, Chinese calligraphy, the symbol for wealth and prosperity, is a great thing to have framed and perhaps place in this area. If you're going to use minerals, amethyst is best. It's rich, it's purple, and it has great energetic qualities. Um, the Chinese money trees are also very good, especially if they're amethyst. They don't have to be, but again, just to get that double punch. Um, and just remember, you want to occasionally untwist the limbs of the abundance or the, the, the prosperity or money tree to loosen up the flow of energy in that area. Um, lotus is a wonderful symbol for this area, so anything of a lotus shape would be great to use. Life forces, green, lush plants, and if you don't have a green thumb, go with silk, but no dried plants. And if you're using green plants, live plants, you want to make sure they stay healthy. And then, of course, other life forms like goldfish. You get it, okay? It's a life form, gold. Um, and you want to have goldfish in groups of three, six, or nine. And of course, you know, keep rotating the fish. You know, as, as one fish goes back to the universe, you want to replace it with another healthy fish. And if you're using hanging crystals, always a good place to put something here. And wind chimes, okay? And remember, wind chimes are important to hang. You don't have to have wind, it's just the, it really is just an energetic attraction. And if you're using wind chimes, you always want to use brass or copper wind chimes. Again, moving clockwise now, at that 12 o'clock area from the door, okay, we're going to be talking about fame. And um, this particular area of your space oversees reputation, okay, and your marketability or your fame and reputation, how you, you want yourself and your work manifested in the world. Um, this is also a great place to enhance or adjust if you're having issues with finding the courage to stand up to do what you need to do. Uh, finding the courage to start that entrepreneurial venture, finding the courage to ask for that promotion, finding the courage to go back to school. Whatever that place is, it is a wonderful place for you to go ahead and enhance and you will then, of course, jumpstart that energy in the right direction. 
If you have windows or mirrors in this guar, you want to keep them immaculately clean. Okay, uh, you don't need any streaks or any dirt clouding your reputation. Uh, again, you're going to address the color. You're going to use the color red to attract energy in this area, but think again that the element is actually fire. So other alternatives could be a fiery orange, like a neon orange, or hot pink would also be good colors for this area. Um, candles are excellent here. Um, they don't have to be real candles. They can be the battery operated candles. And if you're going to use lighting, I would suggest up lighting. To have it like an up lighting flame. Um, if you're going to use crystals and you can find a red crystal, perfect. Um, great place to hang your diplomas, your certificates, your rewards, things of that area. If we're adjusting um, a business, I really like to make sure that everything that we're marketing is represented in this area because, again, it enhances the reputation of the company. And if you're kind of limited in your alternatives of what to use in this space, you can go with shapes. And the shape for flame is a triangle. Think about campfire type of shape. So pyramids, diamonds, starbursts. Again, if you're using other life forces, flowery plants, silk if you don't have a green thumb, pictures of plants, floral pictures, certain in, in the red and the hot pink colors. Um, this is also a great place to have an indoor tree. Right? So a potted tree um, in, in this spot goes really, really well. And then moving clockwise, now the upper right hand corner of a space would be relationship. And this is the area that oversees relationship, partnership, marriage. Okay, so it resonates to the color pink. Um, and the elemental forces that it governs, or the, the um, nature force that governs it, is Earth. So the intention here is that this particular area of the space has a very strong yin or feminine energy to it vibration, if you will. Not to say gender, not female, but feminine, okay? Masculine, feminine, yin, yang. Um, and this represents receptivity, okay? Which means that if you're going to have a good relationship, you have to be receptive. Um, and, and that helps you work through these kinds of things. And part of the ability to be receptive is to be a good listener. So if you've been told that you're not the best listener, this is a wonderful area to um, address. Okay, things that you can anchor this intention here. Again, you're going to get rid of all the clutter and clean the space. Uh, pink items, flowering plants, but you're not, doesn't have to just be pink. Remember the element here is the, the earth force is, is here as well. So you can use earth tones and it would be, have just as much bang. If you're going to put specific items like um, a crystal or minerals or things, you want to group things, okay, group in pairs. Okay, so that if you're going to use, let's say, pink quartz, which is an excellent, excellent mineral to use in this particular area, you want to have two pieces of pink quartz of equal size and equal proportion. You don't want one thing to overwhelm the relationship. So it should be equal partners, equal size, equal shape, and grouping things in pairs will help bring um, refreshed energy and jumpstart the partnership and relationship area. A bowl with semi-precious stones in it will bring in that earth element. Crystals in the shape of a heart, again, you want two. Um, if you're using frames, uh, wooden frames, you want them to be rectangular or square um, because those will help bring in those of the earth shapes. Um, happy pictures of happy couples, um, wedding pictures, you know, things of that nature, great place to have these things. Um, pictures of uh, depicting earth. Um, landscapes, things of that nature also bring in that earth element. And then anything made of stone, granite, marble, tiles, ceramic, earthware, wicker, anything that has that nice heavy earth piece to it is excellent for this space. Okay, so that covers three um, of the areas of the, uh, the Bagua and I will be posting part two in this series soon. Um, if you have any questions, you can certainly log on to my website, www.mfwconsultants.com, or you can email me at mfwconsultants at gmail.com, okay? And go to that Facebook fan page in order to see that better picture of the Bagua with the explanation there. Amana Padmiyom, Ayana the Life Force within you.